We're here on the uh, the bandstand on the center of, right in the center, the heart of Walpole, which I feel to be the uh, the hub. Uh, this is where it all happens <laughs> from. Well, anyway, and this is the J.J. Feely. Just Bob and I just spotted a plaque over on the on the front steps on the right, and it was commemorated, I guess, built by him. Whatever, 1900. So this is actually the Feely Grandstand. So, has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Anyway, what we're going to do is one of the best, I feel, uh, representations of Walpole as a center. Am I too loud? <laughs> Bob was blocking his ears. I thought he didn't want to hear this anymore. No X-rated stuff. No, it's all going to be whatever. <laughs> anyway, it's a nice, it's kind of a nice sweep here. And we're also... Bob also mentioned, and I, I completely agree, that we could do uh, something from the other side, which is also a beautiful view. You, you'll see it on the, uh, on, the, on the website, one of the shots. Uh, it's taken late afternoon, looking up from um, TD's restaurant. And then further out, over the, the rise, is even a nicer shot, which encompasses the whole uh, the whole. Main Street. Yeah. It's a great typical. Up on top of the hill, too, right? On top of the hill, exactly. Uh, well, it's the end of the show. <laughs> it's like in Boston, Boston. Yeah, I know. Sounds like the city. Sounds of the city. Anyway, so what I've done is I, I luckily, as luck has it, I had this piece of masonite board that was cut out of, uh, uh, I guess, some 36 by 36s or whatever. And I just happen to have this, and it's more of a panoramic view. Unlike most of them, a square, or a little, you know, perfectly square, or a little more rectangle. This has more of a panoramic, so it lent itself perfectly to the uh, to the center. I think it's it's pretty interesting. So what I did originally is uh, I blocked it in using um, using charcoal, and I used a dark charcoal. So in order to put the paint down, what I have to do is take a little bit of it out otherwise it it goes it runs right into the color and dirties it up yeah so I want to get rid of that it becomes another color in other words when you uh, when ah there they are my 1926 glasses I've lost about four pairs of prescription glasses over the years and uh, these are the only these are my original pair of glasses They're the only ones that I have to keep relying on the last one I lost on Commonwealth Avenue, the last pair, was on my bicycle and fell out of the bag in the back. And uh, things don't last too long out in Commonwealth Avenue, and they get run over. Anyway, so I've started blocking it in. This is the, uh, I don't know the name of this building. It's a Walpole Center is what it says. And then, of course, there's the old, this is the Walpole Cooperative Bank, which was formerly Swenson's Men's Store. And on down to the, uh, which I think is one of the nice buildings in Walpole, is the uh, the old town hall, which is now the police station. So anyway, we'll just, hey, we'll just go get some color down here, block it in, big areas, big, you know, no, no detail, nothing. Painters get in, start paintings by... You know, beginner painting, painters, I should say, start by uh, seeing how many windows they can put in. We won't worry about that. The light is getting a little rougher. We're, we've become, it was bright for a while and now it's overcast, so we'll just have to work as fast as we can. This is an underpainting in acrylic. It just gives me something to add to the painting in terms of color that I'm not putting on, it's already there, and a wipe area is off, and we'll use some of that color. So, it's just a technique that I've uh, uh, I've come up with over the years. It's not the easiest, but it it you know once you get used to it. I'm gonna block in some big areas. Let's get these trees in. See how see how fast we can go. Anyway. want to get this a little lighter. There is still some light coming in on 
on parts of the the trees and what have you. Okay, I'm not going to worry about this area. I'm gonna, I think what I'll do is I'll paint around this. Yeah, so I will put this in, this part of the tree. It bleeds over. It kind of takes, also lends itself to breaking up an area that would be pretty monotonous otherwise. Well, let's see, we'll be on a tear here. This would be excellent. Excellent. Well, last week Bob and I went out and um, did a fun show on, on uh, Beacon Street. I hope you'll watch for that. It'll be coming up. Or already gone by. I hope you saw it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, see what's happening with the uh, charcoal. It's starting it. It's getting in the way. And it becomes dirty. So I'm just going to wipe it down. Wipe most of the paint out so that I can go over it. Here again, we've got the same problem. But that's no big deal. You know, once... I just find it's a lot easier to get these things paint started now uh, by drawing them in with a with a charcoal. That's all, and then going back into it. You don't have to be a purist, you know. Whatever, whatever does, whatever, is it, yeah, whatever makes it, whatever works for you, do it. You know, if you have to use your feet to paint, that's okay. You know, there's no no hard and fast rules. Okay, so we'll get the big shapes in, get all the trees in for landmarks. This all lends itself to uh, taking me from here, this big shape down to here. Uh, the problem is a lot of these trees are, are dwarfed or have been replaced, so. But that's okay, I don't want them all looking the same anyway. I'm gonna wipe out some of this charcoal here. So you avoid the problem before you get to it before it becomes a problem, I should say. I'll take out, I've got enough of the, the, the drawing underneath to establish the painting. All right. That's the roof. Now here I've gone over into the sky, it's not clean, it's whatever, messy looking, but you know what, when I paint the sky back in, if I paint this part of it, which I may or may not do, I'll make the correction by painting this into this, which creates more energy. Boy, it's raining like a son of a gun. Mm, interesting. It's not raining under here, this is a stroke of genius, and Bob's idea of coming here instead of out in the rain. Have we ever painted in the rain? We ever got stuck in the rain before? A little, but not you can't yeah. like it at all. Yeah, and Bob said a little, but not like this. This is crazy. When we were in the Boston Ave, we painted up in the rain. Everything. That's right, too. Back in, uh, what was that? Bob was saying, Boston Harbor. Last year, last summer. Yeah, it was it, what was that? Okay. Down on the, uh, down, uh, where the heck was it? Behind, um, Yes, Rose Wharf. Up the street from Rose... Yeah, it was in the Rose Wharf area. Right. Um, yeah, there's a, they, they had a merry-go-round out in the... Yeah, and then right near that merry-go-round, near the, uh, the, the Greenway. It's uh, near North Station... North... Uh, where the heck is it? North, wherever. The North End. It's heading towards... Yeah. It's a Jack Nicholson movie where they shot in Boston. Oh, the departed. Yeah. Looks like it was right in that area. It was. It was. Yeah, was that that's the that's place? the same area. The departed. Exactly. That was a great movie. But anyway, uh, what Bob and I were talking about was, you know, the the fact that I usually paint most of the time in the sun. I get bright sun, and this could be as long as it stays like this. It's fine. The problem is, if it clears and the sun comes out, then I got a whole different thing. All the lights, all the colors change. I mean, it's, it, it can become major. And um, we were talking about the wet road and how much more interesting it is than a, a dry road. And, and you were mentioning, Rob was mentioning that, that in all scenes, just about in every movie, outside scenes, the grounds are wet, right? The, uh, the, the roads... Amen. Yeah, the pavement, everything they, they hose down. Because it gives it, I guess, a little more depth, probably a richer color. 
reflection. And the reflection. reflection of light. Yeah, reflection of light. That's right. Especially the night scenes. Those are beautiful. I can't think of the name of one movie where they use, well, other than Blade Runner, which they used a lot of rain and a lot of reflection. That was a great movie. One of the best. That, that, set the, uh, that set the tone for movies to come after that, you know, the, that genre. Anyway, yeah, so it's getting a little brighter. But, hey, as long as it stays this way, who cares? This is going to be an underpainting. All right, it's just going to be something to come back to. Get a lot of this. See, some of this orange is going to work. A lot of it isn't, but it adds another dimension to the paint. Get rid of that. It's a little thinner. I know where I am there now. Okay, so we got this tree. Probably goes up to here. Yeah. I don't want them to look too Christmas tree like. Bring this one over here. And make the shape a little more irregular. And here's the time to do that. <clears throat> Excuse my yelling there. Trying to talk above the traffic. And the time to loosen up and just get a lot of the energy going on a painting rather than, you know, the same old, same old brush strokes, all the same, whatever. Here you can loosen up and have some fun. All right, now we got this going here. It's all detail, but, and that's going to wait for later. As long as these landmarks are in, in place, you should be okay. As long as you get the perspective going, right? All that going in the right direction. Perspective is key in a painting. This kind of painting. They're all paintings, I guess. Uh, let's see. This is, uh, okay, I got another tree here I left out. I think I'll paint that one in. That's one right, right about here. Yeah. And I'm going to pick up some of that charcoal, but you know, at this point, I don't care. Just want to get this thing established. It's as if you have a pencil and you're drawing. That's all. You know, you're drawing with color. That's all there is to it. Sounds simple, but I know to some people it's not. Most people just starting out, it's, it can be overwhelming. And that's what I feel is key in, um, in art is, you know, even just painting. Well, I just want to know how to paint. Well, you know, how about drawing too? You know, drawing is very important. Drawing in perspective. Not saying that you need those absolutely in order to paint, because you don't. Uh, you can get away with without with just a bare minimum, but you're always better off knowing how to draw. So I advocate sketching. You know, doing just sketching on your own, no matter how crude or rude or whatever it looks. It's okay. Just do it. Just keep the. I have a, I have a class in. Uh, in town on Tuesdays, Tuesday morning, and I, I also teach over in uh, in um, Newton.